गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल दिस इज द सेकेंड क्लास ऑफ सेकेंड चैप्टर सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन एंड यस्टर्डे वी आर गिवन द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द सेकेंड चैप्टर माइक्रोस्कोरोजेनेसिस आई थिंक यू आर कंप्लीटली लिसन दैट और ऑब्जर्व दैट वीडियो एंड आई हैव सेट द नोट्स नोट्स नान पेज नोट आई सेट इंडर आ नोट तो नगल एडिट ना ने विचार किया नोट्स एडिट नहीं क्लास का काम नहीं चेंज आ रहे सेकेंड क्लास में मंचला वालों अलग उधर अलग कंडर रिशेषम नोट एडिट रिशेषम एंड आम दे क्लास ले के पोवा सो टुडे आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग द रिमेनिंग पार्ट ऑफ माइक्रोस्पोरोजेनेसिस एस्टरडे वी आर सीन दैट द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ मेल जाने और माइक्रोस्पोरिंग्स कॉल्ड माइक्रोस्पोरोजेनेसिस एंड दैट टेक्स प्लेस इन से द एंडर एंड इन से द एंडर वी आर सीन द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द वॉल ऑफ द एंडर एस्टरडे एंड फोर लेयर्स आर देयर outermost epidermis endothelium middle layers and tapetum four layers are there inside the and uh, andrisium or anda in four lobes are there in each lobe first of all sporogenous tissue develop sporogenous tissue spore producing tissue develop in each lobe and sporogenous tissue divide by mitosis to increase the number resulting in microspore mother cell which are diploid And each microspore mother cell divide by meiosis (MMC) divide by meiosis to form four haploid microspores. And microspores will they are haploid because they are produced after meiosis. So each microspore mother cell divide by meiosis into four haploid microspores, which may remain together as shown in the diagram. If they are remaining together, it is called as microspore tetrad. And Half sometimes they may separate into four microspores. So if they are remaining together, they are called as microspore tetrad, or they may separate into microspores or pollen grains. And when this condition is ready inside the anther, you are seeing that that is produced inside the anther. And if the pollen grains are ready inside the anther, at this stage the this will the wall of the anther will break. You see that there is breaking uh, layers are there, so the wall of the anther will break and pollen grains will come out. And pollen grains are coming out at this stage or at this stage. So we are seeing that the pollen grains. Uh, I think you are seeing the pollen grains. Pollen grains we are taking the hibis, taking the hibiscus flower, and we are taking with the hands. You can see yellow powder-like structures. That yellow powder-like structures are sticky in appearance. And the pollen grains are uh, these, these structures are yellow powder-like structures are called as pollen grains. Pollen grains will come out of the anther when the flowers open. So open in day, the pollen grains will come out. See next, what is the structure of pollen grain? You can see the structure of pollen grain. How the pollen grains are there? See the pollen grains are the study of pollen grain. There is a branch of biology which deals with the study of pollen grain. The study of pollen grain is called a palynology. Study of pollen grain is called a palynology. And see, pollen grains are different in shape, different colors are there, different shapes are there, different appearances are there. So that may vary from plant to plant. Pollen grains are very important because they contain male gametes. So I will explain now. Explain the structure of pollen grain or microspore. See, pollen grains are Round or oval in shape, covered by double layer covering. Double layer covering. The outer layer is called exine. The outer layer is called exine, which is made up of a protein called sporopollenin. See, the exine is made up of A protein called sporopollenin. Outer wall is called exine. It is made up of a material protein called sporopollenin, which is the strongest material of the living world. See, this is the strongest protein or material of the living world. So, exine. The outer wall is called exine. It is somewhat spinous in appearance, spine-like in appearance in some plants. But in certain plants, it is smooth in appearance. Anyhow, the outer wall is called exine. It is made up of strongest material of the living world. 
and the inner wall is called indyne. See, inner wall is called indyne, and this is made up of usual cellulose. The inner wall is called indyne. This is made up of cellulose. So, two layered coverings are there, and on the exine, small openings are present. Or exine is thin at certain regions. This small openings or thin regions are called germ pore. See, small openings or thin areas are present. That areas are called germ pore through which germ tube, germ tube or pollen tube come out during germination. During pollen germination, when the pollen is germinate, tubular structure will come out. That tubes are called germ tube or pollen tube that is coming out through the opening. So openings present on the exine are called germ pore. And in to that, two cells are there. See, the uh, pollen grains contain two cells, a large cell called as vegetative cell and a small cell called generative cell. See, two cells are there. Large vegetative cell are called as tube cell and a, a small cell called a generative cell. Two cells are there. Large cell, vegetative cell and a small cell called a generative cell. And this vegetative cell is usually uh, uh, irregular in shape. It is somewhat larger and irregular shape. Whereas Generative cell is smaller and spindle shaped. The shape can be called as both ends are pointed. So called spindle shaped generative cell. Generative cell is smaller one and it is spindle shaped with clear nucleus. And the larger cell is called vegetative cell and it is usually irregular. And uh, maybe it is generative cell is floating in the cytoplasm of vegetative cell. It is Spindle shaped. Two, two cells are there. Large vegetative cell or tube cell, a small generative cell. This is the structure of pollen grain. So, pollen grain, I will revise once again. Each pollen grain is round or oval in shape and it is covered by two layered covering. Outer layer is called texide. It is made up of sporopollenin. Inner one is called indite. This is made up of cellulose. On the exile, openings are present. That openings are called germ pore through which germ tube or pollen tube come out during germination. That I will explain later on. Then inside there are two cells are there. Large vegetative cell and a small generative cell. Vegetative cell is otherwise called tube cell. It is large in size, sometimes irregular in shape. And generative cell is small in size. It is spindle shaped. Both ends are pointed. Spindle shaped. So this is the structure of pollen grain and pollen grains are coming out of the anther at this stage. You see pollen grains in most of the angiosperms, pollen grains will come out at this stage. And the and the portuvirus and this and these pollen grains are with this shape. And in many of the angiosperms, this generative cell divide into two male gametes before releasing from the anther. Or after releasing from the anther, you can see what happens to this pollen grains. See, after releasing or before releasing from the anther, the next change is that the vegetative cell, nothing happened to the vegetative cell, the nucleus of the generative cell divide by mitosis. See, divide by mitosis into two. And these resulting cells are called male gametes. See, divide into two male gametes. See, this vegetative cell, nothing happened to vegetative cell, the generative cell divide into two male gametes. And pollen grains, so here you see this is a two cell condition, this is the three cell stage. And you see two male gametes are formed. And pollen grains at this stage is called as male gametophyte. This is called male gametophyte. So we remember the differences are there. 
diagrams are different. The question carry diagram can be usually asked for examination. A question carry two and a half marks. You have to find labyrinths are there. So the difference is that this is the pollen grain. This is the male gametophyte. See, you have seen the first year the term gametophyte. Gamete containing structure is called gametophyte. And here, this will not contain gamete. Only vegetative cell and generative cell is there. But this generative cell divide into two male gametes by mitosis. So this structure contains two male gamete. Male gamete. So male gamete containing structure is called gametophyte. So this two cell stage is called pollen grain. This three cell stage stage is called male gametophyte because this contains male gamete. So this is the pollen grain of angiosperm. This is the male gametophyte of angiosperm because this structure contain two male gametes. So remember that, that both diagrams are different. So I will once again say the male uh, pollen grain, the male uh, generative cell divided into two male gametes. Pollen grains may be released at this two cell condition or in some angiosperms pollen grain may be released at this three cell state. Anyhow, when the pollen grains mature, the, they will come out of the under. And see, the character of pollen grain, some of the pollen grains very important as far as plants are considered because pollen grains contain two male gametes which is very essential for the reproduction. So this male gametes of pollen grains, the male gametes should be protected well. So the pollen grains are covered by two layered covering. Remember that this pollen grain exile is made up of sporopollenin. This sporopollenin is the most strongest material, strongest protein of the living world. See, this is the strongest protein of the living world far more. See, this pollen grains are covered by so strong protein to protect the male gametes inside because male gametes are very important reproduction. So, these pollen grains are very strong materials. So, you can see the textbook, you can see that pollen grains are well preserved in fossils. You may know the term called fossil. Remains of an organism once lived is called fossil. So, the plant body, the, you know, we are getting the details of the plants which is lived in the Jurassic time or like that. We are getting, fossils are getting, the pollen grains are usually of the, converted into fossils. So, as far as animal body is considered, bone or life parts are con converted to fossil because a strong part of the body is bone usually. But in plants, more than stem or more than root, pollen grains are preserved in fossil because of the presence of this poropollenin. Because poropollenin cannot be digested by any enzymes, cannot be digested by any acid or alkali, cannot be digested by or destroyed by any hard temperature. So, pollen grains are well preserved in fossil because pollen grains are made covered by the strongest material exile is made up of sporopollenin. Sporopollenin is resistant to high temperature, resistant to high uh, uh, alkali or any acids, cannot be digested by any acid or alkali, cannot be digested by any enzymes known. So, this pollen grains are well preserved in fossil. So, that's a question carrying one or two marks. Pollen grains are well preserved in fossils. So why? Answer is that made up of sporopollenin, which is the strongest material of the living world. So this is about the pollen grain. So uh, we complete the microsporogenesis. Microspores of pollen grains or male gamete is formed. The formation of male gamete is called a microsporogenesis. So remember up to this. Then the pollen grains are another important system. Pollen grains are economically important. You see, the question is that how pollen grains affect positively and negatively? Pollen grains are affecting human life positively and negatively. How the pollen grains are affecting negatively? You remember that many pollen grains are causing, so I will write the point one by one. What are the negative effect of pollen grain? Negative effect of pollen grain. Negative effects of pollen grain. First of all, pollen grains are causing various allergic reactions. See, they cause various allergic reactions in the skin and sense organs. You have seen that various allergic reactions are there. Pollen grains of many plants are causing skin allergy in our body human beings. So, for the skin allergy or various allergic reactions are caused by pollen grains. And 
the pollen gates if you are inhaled into our body it will cause various respiratory problems see various respiratory diseases are produced by the pollen gates you may remember the case of acacia planta and is a most uh, um, dangerous material the pollen gains of acacia is very dangerous because you have seen that this pollen gains if you are inhaled into the body it will reach the respiratory system and cause various respiratory diseases like asthma and bronchitis so like that pollen grains are causing various allergic reactions in the body and various respiratory problems then comes to the positive effect of pollen grains pollen grains are affecting positively also they are used also because the pollen grains are used as food supplement food supplement in various five countries they contain pollen grains contain large amount of protein storing in food so pollen grains are used as a food supplement as a nutrient supplement in some of the foreign countries and another point is that they are made into capsules they are made into capsules and syrup so in market available you have seen the textbook there is a diagram you can download that textbook and see there is diagram is there so, so they are made with pollen tablets are there pollen capsules are there and syrup is there and these syrup and capsules are used for by uh, uh, race horses and athletes for increasing their efficiency if the capsules are taken it will increase the efficiency of body so race horses and athletes are usually using the pollen tablets and pollen syrups and uh, this pollen grains are stored in pollen bank see pollen bank is there and the pollen bank is an institution where pollen grains are stored for crop improvement or for agriculture purposes so pollen grains can be stored in pollen bank at a temperature of minus 196 degrees celsius that is called as cryo preservation pollen grains can be preserved at a low temperature and pollen grains can be used for further improvement of the agriculture so this question is that discuss the positive and negative effect of pollen grains a question carry two marks or two and a half marks there is a diagram in the textbook you can see that diagram so that's about the positive and negative effect of pollen grains so this is the something related to that uh, we will once again what is taught today pollen grain structure of pollen grain structure of pollen grain then comes the difference between pollen grain and may gametophyte difference is there and that's the question carrying two or two and a half marks diagram of may gametophyte then comes the pollen grains are well preserved in fossil why pollen grains are well preserved in fossil because pollen grains are having that exine covering and that is strong resistant material then comes the positive and negative effect of pollen grains after this microsporogenesis is over development of male gamete structure of pollen grain importance of pollen grain is over then see the next topic called as second part megasporogenesis see megasporogenesis this is the second part of gametogenesis so gametogenesis formation of gamete we have two types of gamete male gamete and female gamete formation of male gamete is called microsporogenesis formation of female gamete is called megasporogenesis so this is the formation of female gametes called as megasporogenesis see the how the megasporogenesis takes place we have seen that gynecium is the female part of the flower and each gynecium consist of a basal round part that is called as ovary and elongated neck-like part called as thigh and the tip called stigma three parts are there a basal round part called ovary and a neck-like part is thigh and the tip called a stigma three portions are there this is called gynecium this is the female reproductive structure of the flower and inside the ovary there is a tissue called placenta see inside the ovary there is a tissue, sterile tissue called a placenta and on the placenta ovules are arranged if you have seen the first year taxonomy when we are studying the gynecium 
placenta is there on the placenta ovules are arranged the arrangement of ovule on the placenta is called a placentation we have seen four or five types of placentation in the first year so megasporogenesis development of female gamete or ovule takes place inside the gynecium this is the young gynecium there is no ovule there is no gamete so on the uh, gametes are developing inside the ovary or inside the ovule see placenta contain ovule ovules contain the um, female gamete inside see you can see how the ovules are developing inside the gynecium firstly see how the this only placenta is there there is no other ovules are not developed you can see the, how the ovule and female gametes is developing so placenta on the placenta a small mass of tissue develop see on the placenta a small mass of tissue develop on the placenta like this this small mass of tissue is called as nucellus n u c e l l u s a small mass of tissue develop on the placenta that small mass of tissue is called nucellus this is the first stage then after this new cells develop a small stalk like structure see new cells develop a small stalk like structure like this and stalk of the new cells is called chalaza fumiculus stalk of the new cells stalk of the new cells is called a funiculus a few n i c u l u s stalk of the ovary is called a, so stalk of the new cellus is called a funiculus this is called a new cellus see first of all a small mass of tissue develop a small mass of tissue is called new cellus it develop a small stalk like structure that stalk like structure is called a funiculus later it develop coverings around that it develop coverings around that like this one or two coverings one covering again develop second covering on that and this coverings are called integument this covering is coverings are called integument two layer sometimes one layer sometimes two layer is there are two layers are there inner layer is called inner integument outer layer is called outer integument anyhow they develop two coverings called integument except a small opening at the tip at the tip there is small opening there is no inner covering the small opening is called a micropyle see that covering is that opening is called a micropyle through which germ tube is coming out coming into the oh, uh, embryo sac so it is develop see two coverings the coverings are called integument except a small opening at the tip at the tip there is a small opening that small opening is called micropyle and the point where the funiculus and chalaza join sorry funiculus and nucellus join this joining point this joining point is called chalaza see the point where the funiculus and the nucellus join this joining point is called a chalaza so this is the development of ovule male gametes are female gametes are not developed this is the development of uh, ovule inside the ovary so first of all i will explain once again related to development of ovule develop as a small mass of protection on the uh, inside the ovary that on the placenta the small mass of tissue is called nucellus it develop a stalk like structure called funiculus stalk of the new cellus is called funiculus and the point where the new cellus and funiculus join this joining point is called chalaza then later it develop two coverings coverings are called integument outer integument and inner integument so the two like coverings are there and this a small opening is left at the tip that opening is called a micropyle so this is the development of ovule this mass of tissue is called inside new cellus then the further things developed in the female gamete takes place inside the new cellus 
and see how the female gametes are developing inside the gonococcus in the next class so remember that i will draw the diagram of ovule separately so this is the mass of tissue called a nucellus this mass of tissue is called a nucellus 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 develop coverings outer inner covering one layer then to the outer layer this is the outer layer or outer integument i will label the complete things for your information this tissue is called a nucellus diploid nucellus is diploid this stalk is called funiculus this joint point is called chalaza this is called integument is called integument and this opening is called micro pile so this is the structure of ovule ls structure of ovule o v u l e structure of ovule and see next process male gametes are female gametes are not developed female gamete development takes place inside the nucellus that we can see in the next class the continuous process so we can see in the next class so up to this so this is the diagram ovule this ovule ls of the ovule so this much of labyrinths are there then the megasporogenesis formation of female gamete takes place inside the nucellus and we can continue the next class so this is the development first part of the megasporogenesis how the ovules are developing so i revise once again the total things that is explained today first of all i explained uh, the structure of pollen grain you may remember pollen grain two layer covering outer exide inner indyne exide sporopollenin indyne cellulose openings are present on the exide exide is pilous in appearance so openings are present called as germ pore through which germ to come out inside the pollen grain two cells are there large vegetative cell and small generative cell generative cell divides into two male gametes so pollen grain is two cell stage male gamete of five three cell stage so that is about the uh, then the uh, sporopollenin is the exide sporopollenin is the most strongest material so pollen grains are well preserved in fossil that is question carry one mark then pollen grains are affecting human life positively and negatively the negative effect it will cause skin allergic reactions and uh, react uh, process diseases in the respiratory problems are produced in human beings then they are used as food supplement because they contain dark and protein and they are used by tablets or they are made into syrup and used by human beings or athletes or race horses and they are used for plant breeding programs by storing in cryo preservation storing at a temperature of minus 1 6 degrees celsius the temperature of liquid nitrogen is called minus 1 96 degrees celsius that is called cryo preservation like that positive and that's clearly explained in the notebook positive and negative effect of pollen grain so two cells are there pollen grain uh, like that then comes the uh, megasporogenesis second part of gametogenesis development of ovule or female gamete is called megasporogenesis that takes place inside the gynecium ovary style stigma placenta a tissue develop nucellus that develop a small stalk called funiculus joining point is chalaza then comes micropyle two coverings are there called outer integument and inner integument next stage takes place megasporogenesis takes place inside the nucellus that i will explain in the next class so uh, listen the class very carefully i don't know whether you can understand or not anyhow you listen uh, write the notes very clearly listen once or twice the explanations because uh, when i am explaining before camera i will feel some difficulty for explaining so try to understand that so you can revise the uh, 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 on the same day you uh, listen the very carefully the video and uh, try to write the notes on the same day itself thank you and meet up in a month after that.